Thank you for being with us. Uh, we are running you through some of the big stories of the day on Times Radio. Uh, and your thoughts on this one, particularly welcome, actually. Uh, British people under the age of 21 could be banned from buying cigarettes in a bid to try to get the UK smoke-free by 2030. A ban on flavoured e-cigarettes is also said to have been looked into by health officials. Good idea, bad idea? Text me, 87222. Start your message with the word Times. Jason Reed, founder of Young Voices UK, uh, thinks legislation banning um, these sorts of things is potentially overreaching. Hello, Jason. Hi, Callum. Uh, what is it that worries you about trying to keep people safe from the harms of smoking? Um, well, there are two separate bans that are being proposed here, as you mentioned. Um, the ban on smoking, my concern is that the ban on cigarette sales to under 21, sorry, my concern is that it just, it won't work. Um, all it will do is push people who smoke towards the illegal market, which means that they're uh, their health is in more danger than it was before because they don't know what it is that they're buying. Um, there was a study conducted in 2018 which found that 16% of children aged 11 to 15 have actually smoked. And of course, this kind of legislation is already in place to prevent them from buying cigarettes, but it didn't stop them from smoking. So I don't think it would affect the number of 21-year-olds 21 who actually do smoke it would just make them less safe and fuel more money mm. into uh, criminal gangs and on the vaping side it makes even less sense because this is supposed to be part of the government's smoke free england strategy where uh, we're weaning everyone off of cigarettes but vaping is smoke free in itself and it's much much healthier than smoking so if we're trying to stop people smoking surely we should be encouraging vaping rather than making it more difficult okay interesting uh, the uk's chief medical officer chris whitty has warned in the past that cigarettes are more deadly than the coronavirus uh, which of course we have all responded to over the last 18 months to try to uh, get through to stamp out to overcome and to beat um i don't fully understand why we can't realize on the advice of chris whitty that cigarettes are so harmful uh, particularly compared to something so obvious that actually we should be taking drastic action to, to beat cigarettes and perhaps banning them as one of those things? Well, quite possibly, but um, I suppose the other side of the coin is that everyone already knows, as you say, how harmful cigarettes are. No one's under the impression that, they're, that, they're, that it's healthy. Um, but if people want to smoke, I think they should have the, the freedom to do that. I don't know if it's the government's place to say um, you can't do that because it's bad for you. That, that's a dangerous road to go down because then we could um i mean we've already seen more regulation around junk food and around all kinds of obesity policy um to stop people eating things that the government doesn't want them to eat alcohol regulations as well people have to be able to take the risks that they want to take with their health and uh, the best way to do that when it comes to smoking is to allow people to buy them buy cigarettes legally from licensed vendors so that they know what's going into them or they're not uh, funneling money into um into the black market and with on the vaping side um vaping helps people quit smoking right so if what the government wants to do is to stop people from smoking they should be encouraging and making it easier for people to vape i think the statistic is 52 percent of people in the uk who vape so more than half of british vapors are ex-smokers it's more effective than any other method for helping people quit smoking and so if that's what we're aiming for then uh, vaping seems to be the solution, not the problem. The World Health Organization has said that flavoured vaping products are harmful and they normalise smoking in children. Um, you know, we're probably all aware of uh, walking through a cloud of vape um, behind somebody on the pavement or somebody who's being equally inconsiderate somewhere else and you can smell bubble gum or watermelon, these sorts of things. And these sorts of quite cynical attempts by companies to actually appeal to younger people. Um, we shouldn't be trying to get people hooked on vaping either. There, should we? I'm not sure if there are cynical attempts going on to hook younger people. I don't think it's in uh, vaping companies' interests to have children associated with vaping. Um, and what we do know for sure, and there's no disagreement in the science on this, is that vaping is much, much healthier than smoking. It has roughly 0.5% of the lifetime cancer risk that smoking traditional cigarettes does. And so if more people are switching more people are making that switch from cigarettes to smoke, from cigarettes to vapes, which is what we're seeing, and then that seems to very much be a good thing. It is worth saying, I was reading um, from Johns Hopkins um, University in their medical department, and this is from Michael Joseph, uh, I may mispronounce his surname, Blaha, uh, MD, who says things like vaping might be less, uh, is less harmful than smoking, but it is still not safe. 
um, you know, these are the things that we need to be aware of. Uh, research suggests vaping is bad for your heart and lungs. Electronic cigarettes are just as addictive as traditional ones. They're not the holy grail here, are they? Well, sure, but you could say that about anything. Crossing the road isn't safe because lots of people are hit by cars, but we don't mm -hmm. ban cars, we don't ban roads. We have to be allowed to take a certain amount of risk with our everyday lives. And yeah, I uh, people think, want I think to crossing, do things that might harm them. I do, I do think that crossing the road is a slightly strange and a sort of comparison to make <laughs> to smoking, though, isn't it? I mean, crossing the road is essential. Of course it's essential. Everybody has to cross the road. But actually sort of highlighting vaping as the holy grail, the golden route um, out of smoking is actually perhaps not really that helpful. Actually an end to ingesting all sorts of harmful uh, chemicals of whatever nature, either through a cigarette or an electronic cigarette, into our lungs is a terrible decision and there's no getting away from that. Vaping is by far the most effective tool that we have for helping people to quit smoking. Um, I think it's 74% of people who try to quit smoking using vaping are able to. And uh, with that statistic I gave you a moment ago, it's 200 times safer in terms of cancer risk. Um, it's easy to conflate nicotine addiction, nicotine addiction with tobacco addiction. And they're two very different things. Tobacco addiction, smoking traditional cigarettes is much, much more harmful. And so vaping is a huge step in the right direction. Ideally, if we had a magic switch to make everyone stop using any kind of harmful substance overnight, then that would be the best solution in public health terms. But vaping is uh, by far the best solution that we actually have. Um, just one other thing I wanted to mention, just in the context of this discussion, which is uh, about uh, looking at particularly at people under the age of 21 um, banning, uh, or being banned from buying cigarettes and potentially uh, e-cigarettes has been suggested that that's been looked into by health officials as well. Um, would you support the idea of banning e-cigarettes for under 21s, given that, according to a UK government report, that more 11 to 18-year-olds who had tried vaping said that they had um, vaped before they smoked, that was 20.6%, and tried a vaping product and never tried smoking, which is 28.9%. Uh, if you take both of those percentages together, then that actually outweighs the number of 11 to 18-year-olds who said they had smoked first. So actually, the, the evidence from the UK government suggests that vaping uh, is something that teenagers are quite keen to try, actually, and that's not ideal. I think we're at risk at look, of looking at this backwards because the number of people, especially young people who smoke, is certainly in decline, but there are lots of them. And so if um, the strategy is called smoke-free England, if the government wants to make England smoke-free, it needs to give all those young smokers the opportunity to try smoking, uh, to try vaping, sorry, as a successful quitting method before it goes about banning vaping. Maybe once everyone stops smoking in, I don't know, 20, 30 years time, then we can look at um, vaping as well. But uh, it, it, banning vaping now wouldn't make any sense because it would just leave more people stuck in their tobacco addiction. Uh, interesting speaking to you, Jason. Thank you. Uh, Jason Reed, founder of Young Voices UK. Uh